I think we're ready to start our very first brew. I've snuck into the kitchen, don't tell on me, and we've got everything laid out here that we're going to need to do our first brew. This is so exciting. We've got our food grade bucket that we'll use for our fermenter and the other supplies that we're going to need, including our big pot, which we need to start with some water, so let's get started. All right, so I'm starting out with about two and a half gallons of water. Now, there's a lot of concern about water quality. One of them is city water often has chlorine. Well, if you're going to have a problem with chlorine in your water to make beer, which you don't want that chlorine, buy some bottled water. Another way of doing it, which all the plant people tell me, is fill a bucket full of how much water you're going to use, let it sit overnight and the chlorine comes out. Otherwise, don't worry too much about it. We'll get into water quality and how to make the changes in a later time. I've got about two and a half gallons in here. Now I know we're doing a five gallon batch, but we only have a three and a half gallon container and we'll figure out how to get the rest of that five gallons into our fermenting bucket when we get to that point. Our water is almost boiling, so now's a great time to add your malt extract. They come in these containers and basically you're just going to be pouring it in as you're stirring. Now you don't want to leave it sitting on the bottom in contact for too long because it'll get hot and burn. Just continue adding it and mixing it with your spoon until you've got the entire extract added to your pot. We've got most of our extract in, but you see, you end up with a little bit. Here's a little tip. Put a little good hot water in here, put the lid on, shake it up, and add it to it. So now I can add the final bit of the malt extract to our pot. And now it's time to let it boil. But here's something that's going to happen. As we're getting it close to boil, we're going to have what's called a sugar break. And this is going to basically foam up. So when it starts to foam up and you're a little concerned about it bubbling over, a simple water in a spray bottle works great to fight it back. You can see how the spray works very good at breaking down the foamy head that builds up from the sugar break. There we go. Now we're into a nice rolling boil. And that's what I want to see. Now that we've got our good boil going, we need to add our hops. And this particular recipe calls for hops added at about 60 minutes. So we have two ounces of Liberty hops. I don't like adding hops directly to my boil because obviously this stuff will be everywhere. So I'm gonna kinda of go a little way from our first time brewer and say, this is something that you're gonna to wanna to buy at the brew shop. It is a bag to hold your hops. You simply add your hops to the bag. And add your bag to the boil. And now we're doing our hops. For me, this just works so much nicer than having to worry about getting all the little hop particles out. Little clamp holds it on nicely, and now we're going to just let this boil for our hour. One of the most important parts of brewing is sanitation. This is going to become a way of life, is sanitizing everything. There is nothing worse than having some little microorganism get into your freshly brewed beer, and when it gets time that you get to actually taste it, it's ruined. So let's sanitize, and it's an easy thing to do. If you're working with primarily plastic components, basically any component that's not stainless steel, a great, great sanitizer is good old Clorox, a bleach. You want a bleach that has no uh, odor or additive to it. You want strain boring bleach. 
Our container here holds about six and a half gallons. And to that, I'm going to add about four cupfuls of bleach. It's not rocket science, so don't worry about give or take a little bit. Now, we need everything sanitized. So that includes the lid. Jam it down in there. Get that lid submerged into the water. We're filled with water and now Clorox. By the way, important point. When we dump water, we do not rinse. Never rinse. Otherwise, you've just ruined your sanitation. We're using a three-piece fermentation lock. This needs to be sanitized. Take it apart. Get the pieces in and sinking. We have some tubing. We're going to sanitize it. It's going to be used to transfer our wort, which is in the pot, into the fermentation bucket. So it's got to be very sanitized. Finally, we also have our siphon. So what needs to be sanitized? You got it, the siphon, which of course doesn't fit completely in the bucket. But I don't know if you've ever noticed one of these cute little things. They're self-priming, so we just fill that up because it's the inside that's so important. Now that we have our wort boiled, we need to cool it down to pitching temperature, which is basically about 80 degrees. I'm doing this in the sink using cold water and ice cubes to help bring the temperature down. For our first home brew, we're going to be used a Nottingham yeast. This is a dry yeast, so I need to revive the yeast before I pitch it. I boiled some water for 10 minutes to get rid of any microorganisms, and now I simply spread the yeast, the dry yeast, onto the water. Don't stir. Just spread the yeast onto the water and let it soak it in. So we've let our wort cool down to about 80 degrees. And now we're ready to put it into our fermentation bucket and then pitch some yeast. So, basically, remove the lid and take our Siphon with hose. Place the hose all the way down toward the bottom of the bucket. We get the siphon started, and basically it will siphon itself all the way in to the bucket. You'll notice the bucket is graduated with lines that tell us how much quantity we have, and obviously five gallons is going to be our goal. Notice we have just a little under three gallons. So to make our final five gallons, all we need to do is add some water. Now, the water I'm going to add, I boiled for 10 minutes. Remember, we want to kill all those microorganisms. Boiled for 10 minutes, cooled it down, and now I just have to add it. And all I'm going to do is measure by where it comes in on the side of the container. We're pitching our yeast, as they say. Those are going to be some happy yeasts. Add our lid. And then one final thing. We have to get our fermentation lock set up. And the best way to do this is, I find, get some cheap vodka. Add it to the fermentation lock, and there's a line in there that tells you how much to put in. Put your lock together, and insert it into your bucket. You are now set. And what's going to happen is within 24 hours or so, this is going to be gurgling and bubbling. And about seven days from now, we'll be putting it into bottles and ready to get excited about drinking. So join us next time in the Brew Lab.